So, if you remember, last week I made a video called 9 Things You Remember Wrong About Dragon Ball Super, and it got a little controversial. But I enjoyed the discussions, for the most part, that took place in the comments section. The point of the video I was trying to get across was that there were more substantial reasons to criticize Dragon Ball Super than the ones I pointed out in the video. Many of you then criticized me for saying that, stating that I was an apologist fanboy trying to cover my bases. And that totally isn't the reason why I'm making this video. Totally doing this for me. Just me. I was going to do it anyway. So, with that said, here are five bad things no one talks about in Dragon Ball Super. That's right, we're talking about inconsistent character writing. Real sexy shit here. People talk about animation all the live long day, but few ever mention the writing in a specific way. And the way Toei showcases its characters is unapologetically poor at times. A couple of instances that I felt highlighted this best came during the Future Trunks arc. Those cases being Goku's juvenile portrayal. Be it forgetting how to greet someone for the tenth time, forgetting the sensu beans, scurrying up to people asking them to battle. Goku isn't a complex character by design, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any complexity at all. There is a nuanced approach required when writing Goku's character. A deep understanding of what his core motivations are and how he perceives the world. Unfortunately, there are those in Toei's writing staff that have not demonstrated they understand this. Otamo, Kaba, Hit, Bro, uh, uh, Kale. These are all characters that were created for Dragon Ball Super, but either did not serve a purpose past their initial unveiling, or they were an overly transparent cash grab through merchandising. I understand why characters like Kaba and Hit exist and were created, but the issue I have with them is that once their purpose for creation had been fulfilled, they just sort of vanished or floundered. Kaba was created to facilitate Vegeta's sensei role. Once he had done that, there really wasn't anything left for him to do. The same goes for Hit. He fights Goku a couple of times, and now Goku is so far ahead of him, he too has become inconsequential to the story. Not that he had much of a presence to begin with. And regarding Kale, I have no issues with merchandising specifically in Dragon Ball, but Kale's introduction is too on the nose. It's as if Toei is saying, hey look over here, it's that thing you guys like. In my last video, I touched on the recap arcs discussing how they expanded on the material from the movies. However, that does not mean I thought that they did a better job than the movies. While I do appreciate the effort to dive further into the subjects explored, I do not think that the plot outlines for Battle of Gods and Resurrection F fit into a Dragon Ball arc if that makes sense. Compare them with the Namek Saga or the Goku Black arc and you will see clear differences. Their placement seems odd also. We go from a battle of gods to Frieza trying to destroy the world. Resurrection F just seems out of place with really low stakes comparatively. Oh, and uh, Dragon Ball Super also suffers from having way too many episodes centered around a fucking tournament. When two of the five arcs you have center around tournaments, and one of those two is 55 episodes long, then you need to rethink what the goal of your series is. That's not to say I didn't enjoy the universe survival arc, but I think there is something to be said about variety in the arcs one writes for a series like Dragon Ball. And I'm someone who liked the universe survival arc. There are plenty who rightfully didn't like it because it was yet another tournament. If you look at Dragon Ball Super as a whole, including the Tournament of Power, there are only two characters that stand out as truly good villains. Those are Zamasu and Goku Black. And yes, those are both the same person technically. Battle of Gods had Beerus, who isn't a villain, Frieza is a Dragon Ball Z villain, Hit wasn't a villain, and literally everyone in the Tournament of Power isn't a villain, how could they be if they are all battling for their lives? The original run of Dragon Ball had iconic villains like Piccolo, Vegeta, and Frieza, characters whose motivations were clear and had a presence. This is something that Super sorely lacked in, and I honestly cannot wait for what the next movie and potential continued series might bring. Dragon Ball Super's conclusions are quite weak, and what I mean by that is how they tend to finish an arc. The last two arcs, potentially three, have all finished around a table eating dinner laughing. 
I can understand the need to give an audience closure with the gee golly gosh that was a fun adventure I'm happy we got out of that okay approach but if you don't handle it gracefully it can create an enormous disconnect with the viewers from what they might have just seen a mere episode prior the future trunks arcs conclusion was terrible to say the least and that's been discussed by both geekdom and AJ in the past I'd recommend checking out both of their takes if you're interested most of the people who watch my videos are rad as shit. I absolutely love you guys. It still blows me away that anyone cares about anything I say, and I really enjoy reading your comments whether you agree or disagree. But nothing to me is worse than certain members of this community who only bring vitriol and hate to every comment section they aimlessly wander into. I am not saying this to everyone, I am saying this to the minority. And I am not talking about those that disagree with me either. I never remove comments and I encourage conversation beneath my videos. I am talking about those that offer nothing constructive and only see red when it comes to differing opinions on Dragon Ball Super. These are the people who will parrot the opinions of others who they think are informed individuals. Stop this. I ask you not to agree with me, but to develop your own opinions based on the facts that you know to be true and the discussions you have with others. To not be afraid of being wrong. I am wrong all the time. Look at my videos and you'll see an error here and there everywhere. Especially in my older stuff. Ugh. But I am not disappointed in myself for being wrong, that's how we learn. These, like the last video, are just my opinion on a topic that has come to the forefront of the Dragon Ball community lately. One that I thought needed addressing, and one I hope you were able to take something away from. If not, I at least hope you found my zany antics entertaining. I never intend to be mean-spirited in an unironic way anyway, and I hope you guys picked up on that. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for new videos every week. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching.